thank you for joining me today. My name is John Newby and this is John 2028 Apologetics. And today's video is going to be on one of our early church fathers by the name of Polycarp. Polycarp was born around Turkey around 70 AD and died from martyrdom at around 155 AD. Now before we talk about Polycarp, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple premises here is that he was a, a Christian and he did believe in a lot of the same things we believe today. This is important because this is evidence that what we believe today as Orthodox Christianity and the main um, parts of that being the deity of Christ and the, the, um, and the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is one, but three distinct persons, but one God. Th these were also believed at this time. And I know that some, um, you know, the, the Bible talks about the, you know, wolves and sheep's clothing bringing different doctrines into the world. And this is obviously key um, part of Christianity because it is the way you're baptized. And it is the way that, and Jesus says that you, if you not believe that I'm the I am, then you will die in your sins. It's very important that this doctrine be understood and believed and this is it's it's very important that we have faith that that doctrine was also taught at this earliest times of christianity polycarp was actually taught by the apostle john okay so that's pretty uh pretty substantial there okay so polycarp was under the apostle john who walked and talked with jesus christ the risen lord god okay and uh we have evidence of that. Um, Irenaeus mentions Polycarp, and he writes that that uh, Polycarp was not was not only instructed by the apostles and conversed with many of them who had seen Christ, but was also by apostles and ancients appointed bishop of the church of Smyrna, whom I also saw in my early church youth. Okay, so he writes. We have uh, Irenaeus writing about Polycarp with John. And we have him also mention him to, um, Polycarp to the letter of Florianus, where he says, Polycarp, distinguish thyself in the royal court. And that uh, Polycarp used to sit and discourse um, without going out into his coming of general mode in life and personal appearance. And that he was a familiar intercourse with John and, the rest of, and with the rest of those who had seen the Lord. And he would call the words of remembrance. So he's writing about how Polycarp was taught by John and how Polycarp spoke with the people who saw and uh, walked and talked with Jesus. And, and he was, would talk about it. Can you imagine that? How, how cool would that be? Sitting there in front of Polycarp and Polycarp talking to, talking to you when you're you know, a young boy um, and him talking about how he spoke with people who walked and talked with Jesus. Okay, and it was around that time because this is only 40 years, 35, 40 years after Christ resurrected, Polycarp was born. So this is an extremely, extremely um, old source right up to the early beginnings of Christianity. Okay, and then Jerome also writes about how Polycarp in the book um, Illustrious Men 17, where he was um, part of that as well. Okay, so we have so we have th at least three or four different mentionings in history about Polycarp and his um, authenticity of, of who he was. Okay, now we go now we're going to talk about Polycarp and we're going to go over his martyrdom here in a minute. But he was the bishop of the Church of Smyrna, and we have some of Polycarp's writings. Obviously, he must have been very active. Think about it; he must have had a lot of writings, and he did. And it's not just limited to what I'm telling you in this video. There's lots of other writings that he did. But I'm just going to give you some of his quotes so you can get into a into a um, a bit of um, understanding to where his heart was and what he believed. And you're going to find that it matches a lot of Orthodox Christianity today. Okay, and, and as I mentioned earlier, we do have some sects today that try to, to, to deny the deity of Christ or deny the, whole, the uh, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the triune nature of God. Okay, if, from Jehovah's Witnesses to, to Mormons to Black Hebrew Israelites, all these cults um, come out and try to change the key doctrine of Christianity. They try to throw... Um, arguments about how translations and everything else and how everything evolved from the Catholic Church and the, uh, the Council of Nicaea and all this other stuff. They have no idea what they're talking about. 
they really don't and you can read you can read there's there's a book right here that i love and i, I got for christmas and um or my birthday excuse me my wife got it for me it's called the apostolic fathers i recommend this book apostolic fathers it's translated it's also got the greek and i am teaching myself greek so it's pretty cool reading i can pick up a few words in greek so that's pretty cool you know and uh and it's, yeah michael w holmes and I think Lightfoot has some part of this as well. He's a, a well-known translator. I think he's part of this book as well. I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to go over some of what Polycarp wrote. And what did he say? Does it match your church beliefs? Does it match the, what we believe, what Christianity teaches today, the Orthodox version? And I understand there's differences between, you know, Baptist, Methodist, and etc. But the reality of it is, is that we all have one main thing in common, and that is that Jesus Christ is Lord God, he died and rose again, and that um, you're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and Matthew, in the book of Matthew, it says that, and uh, this wasn't some early or some later um, made up thing by, by some kind of conspiracy theory, okay? So Paul, Polycarp writes right here, that uh, we'll go right here, okay? The letter to the Philippians, he was a church of, uh, of Smyrna, the letter to the Philippians, and he said this, now may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal high priest himself, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, build you up in faith and truth and to us with you and to all those under heaven uh, who will yet believe in our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and in his father who raised him from the dead. Okay? So in the in the in this right here we have Polycarp mentioning obviously he was monotheistic, one god, and he mentions two of the three godhead right here. And he even calls Jesus God. And he obviously calls Father, the Father of God. And there's only one God. Okay, so, and then the Smyrna church responded about Polycarp after his um, martyrdom. And it says this, We wish you, brethren, all happiness while you walk according to the doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ, with whom be glory to God the Father and the Holy Spirit for the salvation of his holy elect, after whose example of blessed Polycarp suffered, following in whose steps may be... Uh, we may too be found in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So before I continue, they're already, they already named the Father, they've already named Jesus, and they already named the Spirit, and they already said that the kingdom is Jesus's, right? Okay. That's pretty much what we believe today. I have collected these things with them, had the most faded away through the lapse of time, that the Lord Jesus Christ may also gather me among his elect into the heavenly kingdom, to whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit be glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. And so we have here where that they were all three mentioned as well. And then Polycarp with his, with Ignatius, and I'm going to do a video on Ignatius soon as well. Another early church father said this regarding and dealing with the teachers of error, dealing with the teachers of error. Do not let those who appear to be trustworthy yet to teach strange doctrines baffle you. Stand firm like an anvil being struck with a hammer. It is the mark of a great athlete to be bruised, yet still conquer. I like that. Okay? But especially we must, for God's sake, patiently bear all things, so that he may also bear with us. Be more diligent than you are, understanding the t understand the times. Wait expectantly for one who is above time. And here he's talking about Jesus, the eternal, which is obviously an attribute of God, the invisible, who for our sake became visible, the intangible, this unsuffering, who for those who uh, sake suffered, who for our sake endured in every way. So, just as of right now, we've had the Trinitarian doctrine laid out by Polycarp and his church. We've had Polycarp mention Jesus Christ as God several times, okay? And he calls him eternal. Now, and this is coming from a guy who learned under the Apostle John, okay? So Polycarp did a lot for Christianity as it began to move. 
but it did, but it, it ended with him being martyred, okay? And he was actually arrested by Rome, and his crime was being a Christian. Now, there, and this is this is what I think is pretty cool. They were going to uh, let him. They were going to torture him and kill him, obviously. But they said, you know, you, you claim that Caesar is Lord, then we'll let you go. Okay? Which would have cleared him from the torture and death. He, re he responded this. 86 years I have served Christ, and he never did me any wrong. How can I blaspheme? You can only blaspheme God. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? Okay? Now... What happened to Polycarp after this? And I'm gonna and there's a there's a uh, there's a uh, like a poem or a story written about Polycarp that the, the martyrdom of Polycarp. And I'm gonna try to put a link to it on here, okay? And uh, there it is, the martyrdom of Polycarp. And I'm gonna put a link to it on here for you. And it basically says that it's it's very well written, and, and it says that at the very end, whenever he was being put to death. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but it says that they tried to burn him alive and that the flames wouldn't touch his body. Okay, and, and that actually the fire went over him like an arc over his body while he was on the stake. Okay, now there's obviously when they did things like this, they did this in areas where everyone could watch and see. And for them to actually kill Polycarp, they had to kill him by stabbing him. And one report was that when he was stabbed, his blood flowed out so fast that it put the fire out. Okay, and this wasn't just like a little campfire. These are serious burnings that they did back then. Okay, they were making statements. They had this cult. They believed this cult. Run around Rome and, and, and changing the way of life. They didn't like Christians. They hunted, them, hunted us down and killed them. Killed us. So think about it like this. There are no secular writings that means non-Christian writings, that, that that didn't happen. It could have easily been disproven. There was many witnesses. And no one ever wrote that, you know, the Christians are making things up, that this didn't happen. The, no, no one ever wrote that. Just like whenever Jesus Christ resurrected out of, the, out of the tomb, no one ever, they didn't ever pull out a body and say, hey, look, here's Jesus. What are you talking about? He didn't resurrect. Could have easily ended this cult of Christianity going around this, this part of the world. But they couldn't. And this also leads me to believe that they couldn't disprove that account either. So obviously, I believe that if the fire didn't touch his body as he was put on the stake, that was God doing that. Okay? Maybe to make a statement. Okay? So, um, like I said, I can't prove that. But it sounds like it might have been true. But what we do know is that Polycarp was taught by the Apostle John and he believed the deity of Christ and he was martyred for being a Christian and he loved the Lord with all of his heart and his church taught on um, the triune nature of God. And these are all important things in a world today where everyone tries to tell us that these things evolved over time. Well, I want to thank you for watching this video and I'm going to do more videos on, on our, our um, early church fathers as well. I'm probably going to do one on Ignatius coming up soon, and I'm going to, you know, I'll let you know about it. And thank you for watching this video, and God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you.